Throughout the ages, many have obtained guidance helpful to resolve challenges in their life. By following example of respected individuals, who resolve similar problems. Today, world conditions change so rapidly that such a course of action is often not available to us. Personally, I rejoice in that reality because it creates a condition where we of necessity are more dependent upon the spirit to guide us through the vicissitudes of life. Therefore, we are led to seek personal inspiration in life's important decisions. What can you do to enhance your capacity to be led to correct decisions in your life? What are the principles upon which spiritual communication depend? What are the potential barriers to such communication that you need to avoid? Father in Heaven knew that you'd face challenges that would require to make decisions that would be beyond your own ability to decide correctly. In his plan of happiness, he included a provision for you to receive help with such challenges and decisions during your mortal life. That assistance will come to you through the Holy Ghost as spiritual guidance. It's a power beyond your own capability that a loving Heavenly Father wants you to use consistently for your peace and happiness. I am convinced that there is no simple formula or technique that would immediately allow you to master the ability to be guided by the voice of the Spirit. Our Father expects you to learn how to obtain that divine help by exercising faith in Him and His Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Were you to receive inspired guidance just for the asking, you'd become weak and ever more dependent on them. They know that essential personal growth will come as you struggle to learn how to be led by the Spirit what may appear initially to be a daunting task will be much easier to manage over time if you consistently strive to recognize and follow the feelings prompted by the Spirit. Your confidence in the direction you receive from the Holy Ghost will also become stronger. I witnessed that as you gain experience and success in being guided by the Spirit, your confidence and the impressions you feel can become more certain than your dependence on what you see or hear. Spirituality yields two fruits. The first is inspiration, to know what to do. The second is power, or the capacity to do it. These two capacities come together. That's why Nephi could say, I will go and do the things which the Lord has commanded. He knew that spiritual laws upon which inspiration and power are based, yes, God answers prayer and gives us spiritual direction when we live obediently and exercise the required faith in Him. Now I'll share an experience that taught me a way to gain spiritual guidance. One Sunday, I attended a priesthood meeting in a Spanish branch in Mexico City. I vividly recall how a humble Mexican priesthood leader struggled to communicate the truths of the gospel in his lesson material. I noted the intense desire he had to share those principles he strongly valued with his quorum members. He recognized that they were of great worth to the brethren present. In his manner, there was an evidence of pure love, the Savior and love of those he taught. His sincerity, purity of intent, and love permitted a spiritual strength to envelop the room. I was deeply touched. Then I began to receive personal impressions as an extension of the principles taught by that humble instructor. 
They were personally related to my assignments in the area. They came in answer to my prolonged prayerful efforts to learn. As each impression came, I carefully wrote it down. In the process, I was given precious truths that I greatly needed in order to be a more effective servant of the Lord. The details of the communication are sacred and, like a patriarchal blessing, were for my individual benefit. I was given specific directions, instructions, conditioned promises that have beneficially altered the course of my life. Subsequently, I visited the Sunday school class in our ward where a very well-educated teacher presented his lesson. That experience was in striking contrast to the one enjoyed in the priesthood meeting. It seemed to me that the instructor had purposely chosen obscure references, unusual examples, to illustrate the principle. I had the distinct impression that since the instructor was using the teaching opportunity to impress the class with his vast star of, store of knowledge. At any rate, he certainly did not seem as intent on communicating principles as had the humble priesthood leader. In that environment, strong impressions began to flow to me again. I wrote them down. The message included specific counsel on how to become more effective as an instrument in the hands of the Lord. I continued to write the feelings that flooded into my mind and heart. As faithful as possible, after each powerful impression was recorded, I pondered the feelings I'd received, determined if I'd accurately expressed them in writing. 